May only God's word be spoken and only God's word be heard. Amen. Both today's Old Testament reading and our gospel have name changes in them. So today, let's talk about the power of names. In Genesis 17, God talks to Abram for the fifth time in scripture. And in this passage, God clarifies their covenant. In this covenant, God will give Abram children and Abram and Sarai will give rise to nations. Abram and Sarai and their descendants fulfill this covenant by following God's ways. And as a part of this covenant, God renames Abram to Abraham and renames Sarai to Sarah. With both these name changes, a Hebrew letter was added. And that letter sounds like a breath or wind or spirit. That ah. So with this name change, every time the name Abraham or Sarah is spoken, spirit is right there in the center of their names. Every time the names are spoken, we are reminded that God's spirit is with them. Abraham and Sarah, by being given this covenant, are changed. God is in the midst of them and everyone who speaks their name knows it. Now, unfortunately, this covenant and this name change did not make Abraham and Sarah's lives magically easy. Nor did it mean that they always did the right thing all the time. Abraham and Sarah continued to be fallible human beings. And they continued to have hardship in their lives. But even in the midst of their failings, in the midst of their difficulties, God was with them. And their name change reminded themselves and others of this truth. Now, our gospel reading from Mark today is connected with a lot of naming. We're in the midst of a conversation between Jesus and Peter. And you probably remember that Peter was originally named Simon at birth, and then Jesus renamed him. It's actually Matthew's gospel that tells us this story of Jesus naming him Peter, because that name means rock, and Jesus proclaims, on this rock, I will build my church. So today we're coming into chapter 8 of Mark's gospel with a name change already in the books, Simon Peter. And right before today's passage, there's another renaming. Jesus asks the disciples who they think he is. And Peter is the one who responds and he names Jesus Messiah. So Jesus now has this new name, Messiah. A name or a title from the Old Testament, which has been written about and thought about a lot. A name or a title that means something particular particular to faithful Jews. But in reality, Messiah does not mean what faithful Jews, including the disciples, thought it meant. Peter imagined the Messiah to be a great warrior who would overthrow the political leaders of the time and take the throne and rule the world in God's way. So when, the very next minute, Jesus continues talking to his disciples and explaining to them that the Messiah will not overthrow the government, and in fact, that the Messiah will be rejected by the religious leaders, it does not go well. Peter pushes back from this idea 
perhaps he tries to convince Jesus to embrace the world's idea of what Messiah really is. Perhaps Peter encourages Jesus to use force to bring down the government and to avoid suffering. In response, Jesus calls Peter yet a new name. Get behind me, Satan. Now, who is this guy talking with Jesus? Is he the rock on which the church will be built, or is he Satan? Well, yes and. Peter is both the rock on which the church is built and an incredibly fallible human being who slips so easily into the evil of encouraging his friend to do what he wants rather than to follow what God has asked of him. So in today's readings, we encounter Abram, Abraham, Sarai, Sarah, Jesus, Messiah, and Simon, Peter, Satan. Each of these name changes signify a change in relationship, either a drawing closer to God's intention for that person or a moving further away from God's purpose. When Jesus calls Peter Satan, he is boldly claiming that Peter is drawing him away from God's call on his life. Every other renaming is about claiming that connection to God more fully. And connection with God does not mean having an easy life or getting things right all the time or even knowing what God wants from us. Being named and claimed by God is about having an ongoing connection with God. Being named and claimed by God is about deepening our connection with God. Being named and claimed by God means that we're listening for God's guidance in our life. Being named and claimed by God means having the humility to acknowledge our mistakes and to learn from them and change. Being named and claimed by God means that we know God is with us in the midst of whatever is happening in our lives. Remember, you too have been named and claimed by God. You too can be an anchor point, a holy center in your name for you to come back to again and again. So how might your name be a sign and a symbol for you? A reminder that you are God's beloved child. A reminder that you are in covenant with God. A reminder that you are dedicated to knowing God more and more. Maybe you have a ha in your name, like Abraham and Sarah. Maybe, like Elohim or El Shaddai, you have an L in your name. Maybe, like Yahweh, you have a Y or a W in your name or a J or an S like Jesus. Think about your name and then think about all the names for all the parts of the Holy Trinity and find a connection. And then remember that connection each time you hear your name or say your name or write your name or see your name. May that connection be a reminder that you and God are in 
relationship. May it be a reminder that you are a building block of Christ's church. May it be a reminder that whether or not you get things right all the time, you have been named and claimed by God. And may it be a reminder that no matter what, you are a beloved child of God. I speak in the name of the one holy triune God. Amen.